Hello, everybody. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Restoration Through Laughter. I'm your host, comedian Delight, okay? And it's definitely my honor to be before you once again. As we always do, let's get our homework out of the way. This is WYTV 7 Christian Broadcasters Network, Inc. And we are delighted to have you a part of this awesome, awesome venture. But we do need your help. So if you please could go to WYTV7.org and donate. Whatever it is, five, ten dollars goes a long way. We want to keep this vehicle pushing forward that we might be able to present your ministries and platform. So y'all, today we have an awesome show as always. Um, I'm going to be looking back on some of my past guests. And so today we have none other than Miss Patrice Cole. How are you doing? I'm well. I'm well in yourself. I'm doing great. It's good to have you back. It's awesome to be back. I'm telling you. Now, we're going to have fun, y'all, because <laughs> as you know, this relationship right here, we are all so friends as well. So it's great when you get to interview people that you uh, knew, you know, uh, and before they, before God to open up all the big doors so you get to see the growth uh, of their life and the things that God is doing in their life. So today we're going to be talking about God doors. And um, I'm so excited because I know that since we last talked, I'm going to show you guys this book here, I'm Not Inadequate. You can still purchase this book. You can still use this. I, I'm telling you, I use it as a daily devotional. I've read it a couple of times. And as everybody know, I didn't like to read. So, that is accurate. <laughs> so, we're growing. We're growing. So the only thing I read on uh, without any you know, problem was the Bible. But this right here was a great tool. But she also has some other stuff she's going to tell you about later in the show because there's been so much going on. So, girl, let me just ask you, how has it been since you came on last time? What's been going on? So much has been going on. God has just really been blowing my mind. If I think about the first of all, I didn't even think about the fact that I would be where I was last year when, when we actually interviewed. And now um, God has opened doors with um, internet radio. I've done a book collaboration that is an Amazon bestseller. Um, last year, I was the Archie Woman of Inspiration. I've done interviews on 96.9. So, I mean, God has just been doing amazing things. And the amazing thing about those opportunities is that transformation has been taking place and God has been allowing me to see and hear the testimonies of those whose lives have been touched through the vessel, that the avenue that he's given me mm -hmm. to, to you know, be an agent of change. So I'm excited about that because, of course, ministry is not ours. It's a gift that God gives us for his glory. So I'm excited about everything that he's been doing, mm. everything. Wow. So you guys heard it. God has definitely been opening up some God doors. You've had an opportunity to be a part of not only one venture for writing a book, but you have your own as well. And then you talked about being on the radio. So what was that experience? Was that your first time having a radio interview? What was that experience like? It was exciting. <laughs> <laughs> Nervous. Um, I didn't know what the expectations were, but... Um, Elizabeth Willingham, she actually interviewed me and she made it comfortable okay. and I was able to go forth with my testimony as well as um, share the information about the ministry mm -hmm. and that actually opened um, doors for individuals to call me to um, discuss, you know, the, the challenges that they face and their, them coming forth with their molestation yeah. um, because, you mm -hmm. know, of course, I'm 45 now. I was 43 when I actually shared it with my family that I had been molested. Mm -hmm. And so there are people, so many people like me or even older than I am because the, our generations were told, Shh, mm -hmm. don't talk, don't tell. Mm -hmm. And even if no one specifically told you, it was a learned behavior. It was like you, you saw it. Mm -hmm. And so that's what you, you know, um, parents say, don't do as I say. Mm -hmm. do, don't do as I do, do as I say, but we do exactly what we see. Right. And so if, although um, no one, for, you know, in my household, my mother never told me it was more like we weren't open, so I didn't share. Mm -hmm. And um, that I found that even with my age and older, I, I think the oldest I've um, mentored has been um, close to 70 years old. Wow, that's amazing. So you see that wisdom has no age, it's experiences that allow you to be able to uh, help others. And by sharing, as she said, you know, we're taught to pretty much keep it to ourselves and what go on in this house, stay in this house. But as Tyler Perry said a while back in one of his plays, if you're being hurt in the home, 
then that needs to be spoke upon because there are others that need to be set free and delivered. And your testimony definitely, I'm sure, on the radio gave people the power to be set free from the bondage of molestation, even if it was in your past. As she stated, there was a 70-year-old that she actually mentored and was able to help through ministry. So I'm so excited about Beautifully Reconstructed. Uh, she is the owner and proprietor of Beautifully Reconstructed Ministries. And I know for a fact that I've seen, I've been following your ministry, and I've seen how God has just opened up so many God doors. I think that that's awesome because um, when you're a vessel and you're humble and you're really walking after Christ's own heart, then it allows him to bless you. So I just want to ask you, when you birthed Beautifully Reconstructed Ministries, what was your idea versus what's actually happened? happening and and your time frame i want to get into that because sometimes we do stuff and our time frame is like okay well it's gonna take me this month but then god starts boom 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 so i know that there's been a lot going on in your ministry how do you feel about your idea and your time frame versus god god frame it is at plan yeah god doesn't consult with us <laughs> The Bible says, you know, we we see a way, but God, you know, he, he actually orchestrates our life path. And that's exactly what he did. When after the launching, the official launching of Beautifully Reconstructed, I started doing a conference call. Okay. And I was okay with that. I was. <laughs> um, you know, it was behind the scenes. And, uh, and, you know, God has given me a boldness now that, you know, even shocks me. Mm -hmm. um, it baffles me at times. But with, I was not being seen. And so, um, you know, God would give me a, a subject to talk about, and we would have like a, a almost like a Bible study per se, um, twice a month. And so I was okay with that. And then um, <laughs> a year goes by, and uh, the um, we celebrated the anniversary. And then uh, shortly thereafter that year, the radio opportunity, the internet radio opportunity, was presented to me. Now. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't really understand, but of course, my when it was presented, my spirit bear witness, so I went forward because not my will, but thine will be done. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> so, even with that, um, I had no idea what where God was going to take it. Mm -hmm. Again, it's been used as a an avenue for people to share their testimony. It's given not only me a platform to share mine, but for others. And that's the beauty of it because, you know, we stand on the word of God that we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony mm -hmm. and the testimonies that have been brought forth have brought healing. Mm. And again, God has allowed me to see it, you know, through the testimonies that have come forth through my inbox, through, you know, um, speaking with individuals, what have you. Mm -hmm. And uh, then you know, I was okay with the little, with the radio station. We're good, you know. Right, it was good. Yeah. Okay. And then, and then, <laughs> then we started doing Facebook Live. Okay, little boy, you know, I'm somewhat of a perfectionist. Yeah. Just a little bit. A lot. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, I kept posting, well, because what if I mess up, you know, what have you. And so I started doing the Facebook Live mm -hmm. after the show. And um, then uh, right after that, shortly thereafter, the opportunity to become, to become a station owner was presented. Mm, now let's let's stop. Okay, y'all. <laughs> if you're listening to the sound of our voices, I'm in the building with none other than the proprietor of Beautifully Reconstructed Ministries, Miss Patrice Michelle Cole, y'all. I am so excited because she's already given us so much energy and so much that we can look forward to with trusting God. Mm -hmm. She's told us that within a year's time, she's gone from writing a uh, uh, birthing a ministry writing books being on the radio and then now being a radio a network owner oh my gosh tell me about this experience oh my god how did this happen well after i i became the station owner i want to say i launched um, not even a month after i launched it someone joined and uh, her name is Kadia, mm -hmm. and she joined, and she became a station owner, which made me a network. Oh, my God. And I'm so excited about her program. Her program actually starts on the 14th of March. Okay. I'm so excited about it. And, uh, you know, one of the things that I shared with individuals who I wanted to connect with the ministry, you know, if you were looking to, if God gave you a vision for radio, 
then I wanted people to share with my heart of restoration, mm -hmm. but I don't want to copycat. <laughs> you know, because people feel as if, you know, I have to do exactly what you do. No, God gave you a vision and he's giving you a people to reach. And so you don't have to be me. However, we have to share the same heart for Christ. Right. Right. So, right. Uh, Kadeem, she, you know, she's different and, you know, mm -hmm. unique in her um, style. And um, just recently, actually, I announced it on yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, I have someone who's coming on as a radio host. So now I have a station and I have a radio host under the network. So, wow. you know, the... And again, the wow factor is is that, you know, her radio program is going to be called No More Tears. She's a mm -hmm. domestic violence survivor, Nita Washington. Wow. She has a book called No More Tears, so affectionately the show will be called the same. And she's going to bring people on who have shared the experience of surviving. And, you know, she gives all mm -hmm. honor and glory to God because I she knew that it. it was him that saved her. So, again, you know, all our stories may be different. However, we serve the same God who rescued us from the thing that the enemy tried to annihilate us mm. with. And so I'm excited. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I mean, I'm excited for you. It's just, you know, listening to how God will definitely open up some God doors. But the most important thing, uh, if you're listening to us, is that it's a God door. Because you talked about the people that are coming on to the station, they have to have the heart for Christ. Because we have to make sure that whatever we embark upon, that God is at the forefront. Absolutely. So that right there in itself is the reason why, ladies and gentlemen, listening to us, you can be blessed and you can be favored of God. Because if you put him first, he will definitely bless your socks off. I'm so excited. I'm, I just want to dip in a little bit um, about your new book. Has it come out yet? When can we get it? Tell us how this thing came about. Because I just got a little, you know, I got a little back end. That's how I know about it. Like I told y'all, um, this is an interview where I'm actually uh, forwarded to interview a friend and tell uh, you guys about the goodness of God in her life and the God doors. So, just a little bit. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Okay. <laughs> you know, this, at my end... My expectation was to actually launch it last year, uh -huh. but got, you know, kind of got steered in different directions with the radio show. And, um, but it's funny because on yesterday I had a conversation. I said, you know, it's a burning fire. I got to get back on that project. Yes. The name of it is no longer Satan's War. Oh and even when, when I was given the title, I was like, Lord, you show. Are you sure? <laughs> However, you know, I, I understood it in part when the title was given to me, mm -hmm. but as I began to write and God begin, began to give me the direction on which to, you know, actually bring the story together, mm -hmm. I understood it. And so, although in the devotional you hear pieces of, you know, um, different things that have happened in my life, the book is actually going to detail the molestation and uh, as well as my the dealing with the root cause mm -hmm. because we know that the at the molestation when that occurred the seed of perversion was sown mm -hmm. and of course that had to be uprooted and I had to be delivered and set free from it and so because I had not for most of my life there were choices and decisions that I allowed that spirit to lead me to you know go forth in mm -hmm. and so now I have an understanding now that I'm delivered and free, and I go back, and even through the writing, I'm able to, God is actually allowing me to be able to help others understand. Mm -hmm. So if they've been operating in that spirit, because a lot of times, you know, we just feel as if, okay, well, you know, I'm, mm -hmm. because, you know, for me, it was, I kept on going back and forth. Mm -hmm. I knew that I wanted to be free, but part of me didn't want to. Right. Because that door was already open. It was already open. Mm -hmm. And I enjoyed the feeling right, of, of right. being, you know, of intimacy. Mm -hmm. And so, but it was, you know, I, I shared, I was actually talking to one of my sisters the other day and I said, you know, I got, I remember the, the last interaction that I had with a, a gentleman and almost went into um, the act. And um, I said, and tears began to come down my eyes and I said, no, God, I told you, I gave you a yes. Mm -hmm. And I was tired of retracting my yes. Mm -hmm. And so that was the point where I knew that I am completely free because although I have an opportunity to do it like so many times before, I refuse to displease God and dishonor him. 
I gave him my yes, and I'm not going to retract it this time. Oh, my gosh. Like, I love that because it also goes to the heart of what we're talking about, God doors. Mm-hmm. You understood that in order for me to reach what God has for me, mm-hmm. I got to shut the door on some things. I got to dis- detach. I got to disconnect. And, I, and I'm thankful for your transparency because there are people out here, if you're listening to us, that are dealing with the same thing. That feeling uh, that you have from uh, engaging in perversion because the door has been open and opening up other doors for you to engage in different uh, things. Molestation was the key root to that door. And because that door was open, it allowed for you to do other things and you were okay with it at first because you didn't want to change. If that's you, God has the capacity to turn your life around. He has the capacity to set free and deliver you from that bondage. You're looking at a person who has walked out of this and who has flourished who has uh, a blessing over her life, favor in her life, because she chose to give God a real yes. And she chose to stop what she was doing, close that door and allow God to heal her. So out of that, all of these God doors have been processed in her life and manifesting and breaking out. So y'all today, um, this is WYTV7 Christian Broadcasters Network, and we are in the building with the owner and proprietor of Beautifully Reconstructed Ministries, none other than Miss. Patrice Michelle Cole, y'all, and I'm so excited to have her back with us. She's given us some insight into what's been going on since the last show. She's been with us on last year, was one of like my uh, first guests, so it was definitely an honor to have her uh, come on. Uh, I thank God for you uh, so much because even in her project, uh, she's always uh, called on uh, my ministry, Godly Laughter Ministries, to be a part. So it's all about kingdom work. It's all about helping each other to get along and making sure that each door is a God door. So I'm so excited to have her in the building today, y'all. And she's talking about her new project, which she's working on, and I can't wait till it's available. I'm no longer Satan's whore. And I know that that title may rip you or shock you, but you know what? We got to be real and we got to understand what the enemy will have us operating in if we allow him. So when you got that title and you started doing the work around the actual uh, book, what was the first thing that you knew you had to include to help others? I knew I had to include the process of my perpetrator and how he actually um, trained me and my behavior to be submissive Mm. because it was to the point, you know, the molestation began about two or three years old. Mm -hmm. So I grew up understanding that that was my norm. It was normal for me to engage in sexual activity with him. Mm -hmm. And it was, I was so well trained that I knew not to share it. It was our secret. And so it was important for me to share that part of my story because of the fact that I want others to understand that what someone else took the initiative to do to you was not your fault. A lot of times we take on the shame of someone else, you know, molesting us. Mm -hmm. Well, we had nothing to do with their decision. We were just the individual that they choose, that they made the choice that they were going to actually molest Mm -hmm. and take advantage of Mm -hmm. our innocence. Mm -hmm. And, you know, even in the book of Deuteronomy, it talks about the fact that a maiden is found and a man rapes her. I believe it's in the um, New Living Translation version that Mm -hmm. actually uses the word rape. And he used to be stoned and killed. So, you know, but we actually take on and we Mm -hmm. allow the enemy to kill our spirit, Mm -hmm. kill our dreams and our hopes. You know, a lot of times individuals that they molest that, you know, they we are promiscuous or, you know, um, maybe we turn to the opposite sex because of the fact that we feel as if that, per, you know, that sex hurt us right. or, you know, we come, become hooked on drugs. I mean, so many things or mm. even as something we don't even think about people overeat. I've heard stories of people who overeat because they, you know, to become overweight so they be, can be unattractive. Mm. So the enemy comes to annihilate their, fu- you know, future. So I wanted to make sure that individuals were free from the ideology that it was their fault. It was not. It was not. And that's a powerful statement because if you have been raped, molested, violated in any way sexually, it does open up some crazy doors and you're the collateral damage. It's it's crazy that you end up uh, making choices and decisions in your life 
that just disrupt your life, take you on a downward spiral because someone else chose to violate you. Right. But if you have God and this woman of God has a platform to help you understand, first, it's not your fault. It is not your fault. And you don't have to bear the brunt or be the collateral damage for someone else's decision of choice. You may have been the person that they chose to do to do this violent act to or to uh, the person that they chose to molest or rape or just to violate in any way. Uh, because sometimes we can be getting abused verbally. Sometimes we can be going through all these different things that we feel like we deserve it or it's our fault. So we start making, as you said, eating too much getting on drugs or doing all these different things so that we feel like okay well I'm I'm this I can do this to numb that pain and I can do this to get away from what I'm going through. So I mean I just think it's it's awesome uh and again thank you for sharing and being so transparent. Y'all this is the time of the program where we allow you to get to know Christ. If you do not know him we're asking you to make your election sure tomorrow is not promised. So don't put off what you can do today on tomorrow because we're not promised tomorrow. At this time, I'm going to pray, and I'm going to ask my sister beside me just to bow her head and touch and agree with me as we pray for your heart. Dear gracious Father, God, we come right now, God, asking, Lord God, that you will come into their hearts, Lord God, those who are lost, God. God, we thank you for dying on the cross, God, that we might be reconciled back unto you. And God, we ask that on today, God, that those who don't know you, God, will say, God, please forgive me of my sins, for I have fallen short. But I believe that you died and rose on the third day that I might have life and have it more abundantly. So God, I surrender my heart, my mind, my soul, my body unto you on today as a vessel. God, use me, God. Clean me up afresh, God. God, I pray right now, God, that you will forgive me of every sin, even the unknown sin, everything that can separate me from you, God. I ask God that you, Lord God, stomp it out with your blood. God, cover it, seal it up, God. And God, that you will build me afresh, God. God, that you would make me victorious, God, in you. God, I thank you for all that you're doing now, and I thank you for my future and my hope in you. God, I surrender my heart on today, and I ask that you come in and live there forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray. Y'all lift up a hand clap in the building. We got some people that gave their life to Christ, y'all, so we got to celebrate because heaven just stopped. Then the heaven just stopped for them. So we're so excited. We're getting to the end of the show. Hallelujah. <laughs> And we want to give Miss Patrice Cole an opportunity to tell you how you can contact her, how you can get her information to be a part of her ministry. If you want to purchase her book, whatever it is, I'm going to give her that opportunity to tell you how now. Okay. I can be contacted um, through telephone, 888-818-8113, or I have a website, www dot beautifully reconstructed dot com my email address is info at beautifully reconstructed dot com and of course I can be found on Facebook at beautifully reconstructed ministries or beautifully reconstructed radio network all right so you have all the information you need to contact this vessel she is a motivational speaker she has a radio show she has a lot going on so if you need her services to come into your church your conference whatever it is Please use the woman of God to birth whatever it is in your congregation because sometimes we need a new, fresh, fresh, fresh word from somebody who's been through some things that can help your congregation be set free and delivered from the bondages of being molested, raped, abused in any way. She is the woman to do that, y'all. So thank y'all so much again for tuning in with us. If you could encourage the people, what would you say? I would say that do not allow the, the past that you have experienced, rather the things that you've done, the things that are, have been done to you, don't allow those to dictate your future. God, once you repent, you turn around, you are no longer the same person. So don't allow the enemy to connect you and keep you tied and bound to the person you used to be. Operate in your God identity and allow him to use who he has called you to be, a child of the Most High King. Thank you so much. Y'all, this has been an awesome show. We've talked about today, uh, God Doors. And when you go through something in your life and you feel like it's the end, if you attach to God, if you sink in with Jesus, he will be able to bless you just like he was the woman of God. She spoke about the many God Doors being open to her. So thank you for tuning in. And until next time, it's you, girl. Do like, okay. Restore your life through laughter.